Raquel Gutierrez, who is a performer in L.A., and she looked a lot like I did at the time, so that is her over there playing the young Cordoba. So. scene takes place at a, at a place at a restaurant called the Women's Saloon and back in those days um, we were very busy er, trying to erect a counterculture whatever the straight world had we wanted like they have restaurants we'll have restaurants <laughs> they have gyms we'll have gyms and we were really looking to set up a separate counterculture as it turns out, now we just share the restaurants and the gyms and everything. But this was a women's saloon, a lesbian restaurant, and um, everybody in it was lesbian. There were no men allowed. This was a very anti-male generation. Um, but I would have snuck Jim in, and I would have gotten him, slapped a wig on you and brought you right in. Um, so that's the situation in 1975. Oh, men is fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> women only places like the Women's Building and the West Side Women's Center, those places may be built louder. We carve out these safe houses out of parts of the city, discarded by men or capitalism. It's one thing to work with gay men politically, but socially, they have their turf, and we have ours. I'll take a Coke, extra ice, please. Oh, my matcha. Rachel called me yesterday, wanted me to pick her up from her apartment and bring her here. But shit, that would look like a date. <laughs> and lesbian feminists, we don't date. Dating is patriarchal. So I just asked her to meet me here. I don't want to announce to the whole community that I'm dating someone new. Well, not yet, anyway. I haven't told BJ, my primary lover, that I want to start seeing someone new. I mean, sure, BJ and I, we have an open relationship, but I forgot to mention Rachel. Yeah. Let's see, what will I have tonight? Hmm, handmade, handmade mayonnaise with fresh herbs from the Yellow Brick Road? Or tofu in a hundred different incarnations? <laughs> I think I'll just stick to the gentle spirits, arts, crafts, plants, and etc. <laughs> Christ, there's Pody over there. She works here. Sometimes I notice that Pody flirts with me, and it sort of makes me feel uncomfortable. She's butch. And back in the bars in the early days, butches never crossed that line and slept with each other. Uh, that would be fucking embarrassing and totally uncool. <laughs> Uh, but feminism says that butch vampiring is heterosexist, and to be truly egalitarian, feminist butches like me uh, should sleep with other butches. And femmes, well, femmes must sleep with other femmes. And nowadays, everyone wears the same androgynous look. Uh, they're wearing the same clothes, practically. Uh, no wonder everyone is having short, meaningful relationships. <laughs> Damn. Where's Rachel? I'm nervous. What I really want is a beer. But my editor, Penny, she wanted me to not drink tonight in case I have to work. Uh, she says an underground free press source is going to call her uh, with a last minute interview with someone from the Weather Underground. Wow. What an interview that might be. Hi, Rachel. Hey, babe. Babe. <laughs> How sexist is that? <laughs>
phone call for you, Cordova. It must be my editor. I have to work really hard. Excuse me, I have to take this call. Damn it, Penny! Is that you? Yes, it's me. I've been calling you everywhere. Beach said you'd be at the saloon. Our fugitive source just calls. His people are in town, and he wants you to meet them. When? Tonight. Now. Damn it, Penny! I'm trying to have a personal life here. Well, outlaws can't wait for them. And I've got the directions, and I don't want to give them to you over the phone. Can you come to me and pick them up? Are you sober enough? Of course I'm sober enough. Penny, I never drink on a work night. God, as soon as I see this guy, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind for this outrageous interruption. Okay, so I'm going to see you in a few minutes, then. Yes, that's fine. All right, this is really important. Goodbye. Damn the revolution! <laughs> I don't think I can handle being in love with 